Did he change your mind about him at all last night? No, but I will say he played well last night. Um, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. It was summer league. A lot of these guys, Skip, are not going to be NBA players. Bless, uh, give them credit for sticking with it as long as they have. I mean, he's going against Taco Fall for the better part of his career. He's been a G League player who does not move particularly well. And he's basically what Chet Holmgren needs, a guy that doesn't move very well. Chet Holmgren does move well to be a seven-foot-tall guy. And then the other guy was Vic Law. I think he's like 6'7", who played the most, uh, majority of his career in Australia. But I will say this, Skip, he shot the ball really, really well. Guys are challenging him. Um, but they don't know how to attack a shot blocker. You got to get into his body, Skip. You can't have space between you, think you can go up. The guy's seven f- foot tall with a seven six wingspan. You have space. You have to cut down the space. You have to get into his body, which is, which is not very much of a body. I still have the same concern, Skip. I mean, I'm looking at him like, man, Man, he he take a charge. If I'm him, I'm not taking any charge. My first two years, Skip, I'm not taking one charge. They're going to break him in two. They're going to they, they, they're gonna cave, they're gonna cave him in two. Um, it helped last night, Skip, that he had Josh Giddy out there. You know what I think of Josh Giddy, mm-hmm. a guy that's a triple-double machine. He could really, really play. So I thought it made and, the game. And obviously he's played NBA <laughs> yeah, basketball yeah. for the Thunder yeah. last year. Yeah, Skip, I think he had like seven or eight triple-doubles mm-hmm. last year. Yeah. So it made the game a lot easier. For uh, uh, Chet Holmgren, but I have I still have the same concerns. Although I did like what I uh, I saw last night, Skip. I'm not going to say, okay, yep, you're right, you're right. He should have been the number one pick, and now he's going to be the next Kevin Durant. I'm not leaping on that one yet. Mm. (sighs) Okay. Last night, after I finished watching what I watched, and I watched the whole thing, Mm -hmm. it did reopen my eyes. It did make me rethink what I thought about this kid when I would see all the high school highlights and I kept telling you on air, hey, there, there's something special going on. I, I've never seen anything quite like that at that height and that wingspan. Mm-hmm. Because I saw the best handle I've ever seen for 7-1 or above. And they're listing him now at 7-1. I don't know if he exactly is, but right. that's what they say he is. He plays 7-1 with 7-6 wingspan. So then I'm watching carefully at Gonzaga, and I'm not not seeing a whole lot during the regular season, but I I wasn't disturbed by it until we got to the NCAA. And then I just say what I see when I sit in this chair. And what I didn't see came, obviously, against Memphis and Arkansas. Now, to the kid's credit, or to give him somewhat of a legitimate excuse, he immediately got in foul trouble in both games. But I'm thinking, is that, is that what's going to happen in NBA right. games? Are they just going to go right at him and he's yeah. just going to have to foul, foul, right. foul right. And, and constantly be sitting over next to the coach? Right. Well, that's what happened in those two games. And the numbers aren't terrible for the two games because in the game that they lost to Arkansas, he only played 23 minutes, but he wound up with just 11 points. But he had 14 rebounds, and he had two blocks in that game, four blocks against Memphis. But – what concerned me the most, which what disturbed me the most. Didn't Memphis have a guy to go number uh, well, first round pick? Yeah. And yet the point was this kid in those two NCAA games looked timid to me. Yeah. He looked a little scared to me. Yeah. He looked a little overwhelmed because he looked like he knew in his heart of hearts, I'm a little overmatched right. athletically and and in, in man strength out here. I, I can't contend with them. They're just stronger than I am. Right. They're more powerful than I am. So I'm like, wait a second, what's going on here? Last night, he looked like a different kid. He walked onto the floor like, I own this floor. Right. And he seemed completely poised, completely confident and comfortable in ways that he wasn't against Memphis and Arkansas. But you okay, but we, are these teams out there last night as good as Memphis? And, you better believe they are. Right. They're probably a little better than but Memphis here's the and thing. Arkansas. Okay, they were better, but he was going up against players. Now, Skip, the question is, he walks on the court, he's like, well, I'm the only, second, I'm the only number two draft pick on this court. That is so true. he automatically assumes he's the best. Okay. So what happens when you step up in competition and there are a lot of guys that were drafted very high, that were lottery picks on that court? Are you going to still mm-hmm. feel that same way when you go up against Embiid, when you go up against Carl Anthony Towns, Nikola Jokic, Anthony Davis, Giannis Antetokounmpo? Are you still going to feel that way? Because that's what I want to see. We talked about this, Skip, and we talked about it about four or five times. Mm -hmm. Skip, when he was the best player, he showed. But when that competition was on the level with him, Mm -hmm. he shrank. 
Okay, so I look back at what he was doing last year at Gonzaga, and he does have respect and honor for his elders because last night in the postgame interview, he made sure he said, I want, because Holly Rowe at ESPN yeah. was going to interview him, he said, no, I, I want Josh Giddy over here. Right. You, do, you want Josh Giddy? Right. Because he said he, he gave him full credit. That, that was a good start. That's the way you in, yeah. ingratiate yourself with yeah, your yeah, elders yeah. Yep. on the Oklahoma yep. City Thunder, not that they're packed with veteran stars. <laughs> exactly. But the point was, last year he's with Drew Timmy, who was a junior in the starting lineup, and they started two seniors and two juniors, and it looked like to a fault he would honor his elders, like he wouldn't command, right. demand the ball, like, yeah. like give me the ball and get out of right. my way. He didn't play like that right. last year. Last night, it looked more like that. He wasn't afraid to shoot it, and he just shot the lights out mm -hmm. because he's got a stroke. It, it's as good a seven-foot-one or above shooting stroke as I've ever seen. It is a sweet stroke. It is a textbook guard-like stroke. I don't know where he got it, but he learned it as a kid, and it stayed with him because usually your hands get too big and you can't cradle right. the basketball in your palm right. right. You can't get your fingertips on it, what, and usually it looks awkward. What, what have you said about American big white men? Well, they there, better there's never been yeah, one. Exactly. No, no, seriously. That's, so, it, it, it's, it, unless you want to go Kevin Love, does he qualify as a as – a, he's but, not a seven-footer. But, but he but And he changed himself into a stretch. Now, he was not the Kevin Love when no. Minnesota – he was a back-to-the-basket player, yeah. giving you 26 and 14. Right, and, he, and just to differentiate – the Euro kids come over here at seven feet and above, and they just know how to play. They're way more right. skilled Yes, for, for hi history's sake. Right. If we look back in history, go look at every seven foot or above American kid draft in the first round. They, they turn out to be NBA quality stiffs. That's, mm -hmm. that's what they are. And, and usually, if they're not a flat out bust, right. they're, they're nothing but an also ring. Right. They're just a rotation. It player. probably started, I think, Sabonis was yeah. maybe the first one that came okay. over here, and he was a. Okay, they but, think but, of but, but he's obviously a, a B. European. Yeah, yeah, exa yeah. exactly. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the other thing that happened last night was you could see. This kid is a gifted shot blocker, and I didn't waver off that. Point no, 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 no. He can... Because he's a quick jumper to start with. He's got that quick second jump. If you get him the first time, he'll go right back up. Right. And he, he has that gifted timing mechanism that you have to have or you can't do it. You, you have to be able to anticipate, are they faking me or what, and then, then go. Correct. And he had a couple of blocks last night. That, that Vic Law that you brought up is 6'7". <laughs> but, but he wound up 0 for 10 from, uh, on two-point shots because he, he just couldn't find a way to the basket. Right. And there was the one block that, that he just ate it. I see a little bit. Like, like Kevin Durant is, is as skinny as you get, right. but he's skinny strong. Right. You know, like he's, right. he's got grown man strength right. to him. Okay? But, but that's, Skip, but that's come over the years with it, age. It I, so, I, I mean, what's Chet? 19, 20? Yeah. Kevin yeah. Durant, you know is a different player at that age than he is currently. Okay. Last night, he blocked six, and then it was funny to me because I, it felt like he'd blocked ten. And if he, he altered did, a bunch. It, it, he altered a bunch of shots. He's going to lead this league in blocks, I believe. If he can do nothing else, if, if the other stuff doesn't work, right. I still think he can alter and block and lead the league in yeah. blocks. And they pay for and, that. Ask Rudy Gobert. Okay. Ask Rudy Gobert. <laughs> That's all it was because he didn't think he had that great a game blocking right. shots. Right. Well, they play again tonight against Memphis. Right. They're not Memphis College, the right. Memphis pros. Right. And, and I, I think he's thinking, well, I, well, I could get seven tonight. Right. I could get eight tonight. But, you, but, Skip, you know the bigs, they go up strong in this league. Yep. And, do that. I mean, you, I mean, at 195. So okay. if I'm him, I'm not trying to block Joel's and B dunk. I'm not trying to block Giannis and those guys that's going up with two hands and they're gonna put you in the rim. Okay. So the game has changed. We now have yeah. stretch centers, right? <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, stretch so five. Let, let's look at the shooting motion. In the first half, he makes four threes, just bang, bang, bang. And then at the end of it, he makes a Dirk Memorial step back one legged, you know, off one foot yeah. jumper that put the exclamation point on it. He goes over and says, he, he's just too little, you know, because right. he is he's just yeah. too little. OK, he can't guard me. That's what he was saying. Right. OK, he's got some trash talkiness to him mm -hmm. that I kept bringing up during the year that I did not see against Memphis or Arkansas in the NCAAs when he shrank. Right. But last night it started to come out a little bit. You've got to have a little bit of that edge or they will eat you alive. Oh, they're going to go way. at him anyway, Skip, for the yeah. simple fact he's the number two pick in the draft. And you know how that is, having been around football locker rooms a lot more oh. than basketball locker oh. rooms. They got to see now. 
Oh, you the number two of the pick in the draft? Now, I need to see why. I need to see what's all this hype about. Because mm-hmm. I, I, like, when we were when I played, Skip, if you came to my team, you won the bucket, so you won this award, you won. We got to see why. Absolutely. When you play in the NBA, them guys are going to want to see why you were the number two pick in the draft. Now, I need to see. Because, like, I'm going to try to make my, uh, did you see what such and such did to Chet Hungry, the number two pick in the draft? So, I'm going to get, hey, I'm going to get my rep up on you. Yep. Because I know you're trying to get your rep up on me. Okay. So his first half of summer league action, he scores 19 points. He blocked three shots, and, and he was six or seven on, on his shooting mm-hmm. and made four or five threes. Well, that's a welcome to the NBA. Yes. Okay, now the good news and the bad news is you have sent shockwaves. We're talking about it here, and there's no – if he'd had some home game, we're not even acknowledging then that the he right. played true, last true, night, true, right? True, Unless we true. thought it was awful. Right. But the point is – around the league, all the way up to the top, to the king, to LeBron, I'm sure they're stroking their chin saying, hmm, can't wait. You know, like, yeah, okay, now <laughs> we, we, we see what he can do. He, he says, I'm here. Welcome me to – he welcomed himself to the, to the NBA, even though it's just summer league. And the hype monster is already He's out of control, man. Yeah, it, it's going crazy. And I, I liked what the Oklahoma City mayor tweeted last night because it was funny. He, he tweeted like five straight lines of, it's just summer league, it's just summer league, it's just summer league, it's just summer league. Yeah. And then the last line was with an asterisk, clearing schedule for June of 23. Okay, like, guess yeah, what's going to yeah, happen? Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, all right, okay, okay. Summer league to the finals. Right, right. <laughs> okay. But, but, again, that's kind of the – that captured the right. mood of the night was, right. wait a second. So it makes me wonder now, remember, Jabari Smith, everybody, you loved him. I love I, him. I, I liked him. I still think slightly that I would favor him over this kid. Yes. Just because he's such a pure shooter. He is durant S. Yeah. Okay? 16 to him. But I told you what shocked me was that I thought Orlando would take him one, and they took Bank here. Right. And all of a sudden – Sam Presti and the Oklahoma City Thunder are on the clock. And I thought, are they going to rethink their position here? Because did they really think that Jabari was going to fall right in, out of heaven into their laps? Right. Uh, he did not rethink his position. The card was up to the commissioner in about five seconds. Right. They knew exactly what they were going to do. That They did not second-guess Jabari Smith falling right through their lap to the Houston Rockets. Rockets. Mm-hmm. And so here we go. So this kid is going to have to live up to – oh, I'm better than Jabari Smith because that's what you're set up for. And we'll start to see, I think, right. uh, Jabari plays, I think it's tomorrow night with Houston, what, and, and we'll start to rank. And you'll you'll what, start to say, well, what does it look like? Well, you go get compared, Skip, because yep. that's where you are, the second and third, just like Bowie and, and Jordan. Yep. Like, how could you take Sam Bowie over Michael Jordan? Elijah Wan, we saw Elijah Wan. I mean, th- 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 we'd never seen anything like Elijah Wan. A there guy was that never any it. argument about that. Exactly. In, in the biggest Big, picture, you could argue it, yeah. but really not. Right. No, nobody said anything. So you could make a case, because he's ar- arguably, you know, he and Bill Russell, the greatest defensive centers, and he had offensive skills that Russell just didn't have. But but they're going to be the comparison between Holmgren and, 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 yep. and Jabari Smith. Right. Because, man, they better – Skip, he better be the real deal. Because if Smith is what I think he can be – Well, it would make Sam Presti look foolish. Yes. Okay? If he continues on the arc that he started on last night – Guess who else it might make look foolish is Mark Few at Gonzaga because what's the old line? And I'm not comparing Chet Holmgren to Michael Jordan, but what's the <laughs> oldest line about Michael Jordan? There's only one man who could stop him, and that was Dean Smith, your Dean coach of the team yeah. that you grew up loving, coach the North Smith. Carolina Tar Heels. You had to play right? in the system. The system is the system. You had to play the system. the system because I never saw the Jordan Nobody. I came to know in Chicago. I didn't see it at Carolina. I and remember, t- he stayed for three, three years. years. Three years. Three years? Yes. And he had great players. Skip, he had Sam Perkins, he had Kenny Smith. He had, uh, as a matter of fact, I think he had one year with Brad Darty. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't well, like. Well, he had Worthy. He had James Worthy. The, James Worthy, yeah, James. He was a yeah. freshman. Yeah, right? so it wasn't like he, I mean, lot, James Worthy was the number one overall pick in 82. Yep. Uh, uh, Brad Darty was the number one overall mm-hmm. pick. And mm-hmm. so it was, and Sam Perkins was a top pick. Mm-hmm. Kenny Smith was a top pick. Well, Sam Perkins went, went to my Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. I was in Dallas then. One pick after Jordan Dude. went to the Bulls. Oh, and he had Jimmy Black. Jimmy yeah. Black was, Jimmy was not bad. Yeah. yeah no. So you're right. Nobody saw this, Skip. If somebody would have told me Michael Jordan was going to score the amount of points that he scored, just watching him in college, now he was sensational. He played above the rim in college. But, Skip, I didn't see this. This dude came out the averaging 28 and then 30, then 30, 30. Come on. Come on. But my point is, on a much lower level, yeah. 
if if this kid continues on this arc, yeah. you you might look back at Mark Few and say, well, what, what, what were you doing? Well, I guess you say that by Calipari and Cat, because I didn't see this with Cat. I didn't see this with no, Anthony Davis. No. <laughs> Maybe it's just college basketball. Maybe it is. Boogie? Nope. Agreed. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.